Hello and welcome back to YCS 200, the European edition. I'm here with Matt Bell. Hey, Luke. We're smashing it. We're in the top, top 64. 64. Man, this has uh, been one heck of a tournament. Yep. We started with 2,300. No. Yeah, yeah 2,356 2, duelists. Yeah, I don't which I got the number wrong. Then. Just blown our previous record of like 1,900 yeah. something. Who even cares what that old record yeah. was? It's irrelevant. That, that was before the late registration as well. I think it was even more after that. Really? Yeah, there was oh. like an extra 14 wow. people or something. Anyway. A lot of people, and we're down to the top 64 of them. Yeah, we've literally gutted everything else out of the tournament. We've just got the players that had the best standings left uh, to play off in the final brackets to decide who's going to be the first 200th champion. Yeah, First exactly. of three. First of three, yeah. Um, I think around about now is when uh, when the other stream will be starting. Uh, yeah, we'll be around sort of um, a few more hours, I'd, I is expect. That? Okay. I, I honestly yeah. don't know what time it is. We, we, the, the, the light always tells me it's 12. Oh yeah, because there's no there's no uh, no natural light going on in the hall at the moment, so you kind of just, time just gets sucked away from you. Yeah, exactly. So we have. Uh, I always like to check see if the players have got their headsets on. Um, we have an interesting matchup for you. Uh, we still have. They're always few, interesting. They are always interesting. Um, but you know, we're we're not quite got to the point yet where all of the outsider decks have been kicked out of the tournament. So. No, it's quite an open format because of yeah. the uh, new Forbidden Limited list coming in and people like had to figure the format yeah. out and they haven't had a lot of time. So this round we're going to be doing uh, Burning Abyss uh, versus Sky Striker. Yeah. Um, fellow commentators. But yes, it's actually Tom Rose who was the YCS Liverpool winner, one Attention of our commentators, yeah. and also UK national champion. All yeah, exactly. And um, we got the win rates for Burning now. Abyss. Right now, uh, Burning Abyss overall for every matchup is at 47%. Oh, so it's actually not down not against the overall field. Yeah, however, that's all of the Burning Abyss players, not just Tom. Uh, and against Sky Striker Pure, it only has a 30% win rate. Wow, that's that's pretty rough. But yeah. uh, Tom's actually playing some real spicy tech yes. uh, in this one, which we hope to see showing up on the screen. Yeah. He's been super proud of it. It's been a card I've been interested in for a while. I won't reveal everything, but yeah. exactly. uh, you guys will just have to wait and see what happens. Well, let's not uh, let's not make Matt wait any longer. Let's shoot over to Oliver German and Tom Payne for the play-by-play -play commentary. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Luke and Matt. Um, People keep asking me over the course of these weekends, how do I get a feature match? I keep telling them, you just have to win a tournament. Or you have to bring something really, really interesting to the tournament and go 3-0 and then we can feature you before you drop out. And there's a third option apparently, you just have to make it into the commentary team. And then if you do okay at the tournament, like reaching the top 64 of one of the smaller events like this weekend, you can also get a feature match. Those are the three ways officially from I now on. The best way was just to send Matt Bell a message. On Facebook. That is that is the fourth way. I forgot about that. Thank you very much. Preferably lots of messages. Lots of messages on Facebook to Matthew Bell is also going to do the trick and you're going to end up in the feature match, maybe even in the finals. That that does it too, yeah. All right. So we did talk about Tom Rose. He's playing Burning Abyss. Um, some would say no surprise here. Some would say. I think many would say no surprise if they've seen Tom Rose play in a different tournament where he also played Burning Abyss and then one of the other tournaments where he played Burning Abyss. Unlike and then a tournament where he played Burning Abyss again. <laughs> Unlike Valon Leturt, who uh, did well with Burning Abyss in Prague, and who basically claimed this, the next year with almost the same identical deck, it seems like Tom Rose is coming up with a new version of Burning Abyss for every single event he's in. I would say this is actually fairly similar to his build at Nationals. There's a one new addition, which is Orbital Hydrolander, which maybe I was stealing Matt's thunder because he was talking about his spicy new tech, and that is the tech, and Matt didn't say it. Oh, you I'm just, just said that. I'm just going to spoil it okay. for everyone. People, if you're walking through the streets of Utrecht, don't be walking next to Tom Payne. He's going to throw you on the bus like he does <laughs> in the commentary all day long. <laughs> now, his opponent is Matteo Peloni from Italy with Sky Striker. Um, Sky Striker, of course, the, the deck that did really, really well this weekend, and Italians also doing really, really well this weekend. We're going to bring up the stats for you a little bit later. I think everybody here is waiting for that match to start, so let's kick things off with Tom Rose versus Matteo Piloni in our top 64 feature match. So we see a dice in front of Matteo, which means he's allowed to go first. He may have chosen to go first. He wants to, right? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a blur. Sky Striker, I mean, he's running a lot of hand traps. So someone running a lot of hand traps may be choosing to go second. Right. But you don't know because Tom, you know, Burning Abyss may go first, may go second. Okay, he, he decides to go first. But he's going first. Between the two of them, they decided. What I find quite fun about Tom's deck list is he's running so many monsters that 
the monsters spilled over onto the trap section. <laughs> But the monsters that he put in the trap section were all of his hand traps. So he put the hand traps in the <laughs> trap section. I think that's really neat. That's a very unique take, yeah. It would be fun if he just cancelled out the, the trap at the top and says hand, hand trap, trap cards. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that would be fun. But fortunately, you can still use them and Sekka's well. I, I still give that, in terms of style points, um, I would say that's a 10 out of 10. I don't know honest. if he's done that intentionally. We should ask him afterwards. Yeah. All right. So, see a lot of searching going on. Not that surprising. It's almost always the most consistent deck in the field that, that has the most search effects tends to be one of the best decks in the field. Searching is good. Searching is good, yeah. It means you can have the cards that you want. <laughs> that, that's the definition of searching, my friend. Well, no. I'm, I'm going to hand you a dictionary for the next event. Lots of, you know, searching... Success the German to the English person. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some cards only search one other card. Engage mm. has a choice of like 10 or something. It depends on what deck you're You're saying playing. that's a bit better. That's more than one. <laughs> okay. Very technical analysis today. Very technical. I would say normally starting with the engage is good. We haven't seen Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion all weekend. And uh, Matteo is holding it in his hand. It's one of those cards where it does something almost all the time. But is it going to do something amazing? Right. Uh, and the answer to that is possibly no, more <laughs> often than not. But it does something. Well, that, that should be the answer if nobody else is playing it, un unless people have really forgotten about so certain So in the Sky Striker Mirror Match, for example, it can negate Kagari's effect. But so did Effect Veiler, as played by Tom Rose. Yeah. So it's okay. It stop, you know, it can stop your opponent adding back a crucial engage. But then, you know, if you don't have anything else, your opponent can just upgrade the Kagari or not upgrade it, but switch it out for Shizuku, as is done here. So Thomas, actually, I was about to ask, isn't he having any hand traps because he's kind of he known for He doesn't these. even have a hand at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he's got two hand traps. Yeah. And in fact, there's a third and a fourth in his hand. But fortunately, one of the cards is Sekka's Light. Um, so he's going to get some, hopefully, <coughs> non-hand traps in order to be able to play some interesting okay. cards. Now we managed to get the cards in hand for Thomas Rose up. We do. We've got one of his only two rescue cats, Just which does surprise me. We lost the cards in hand for Matteo, but they're going to come back. <laughs> um, I've, by now I've figured out this whole technical stuff. It's a bit weird this weekend, to be honest. He's learning. Yeah, it's, it's like we can only show one player at a time. Yep. But we're getting there. So one of the cards that people might not be so familiar with is Pero Pero Cerberus. Uh, when it's in the graveyard, I think if you take battle damage, you can banish it in order to target and destroy any card if, on the field. If you take damage any which way. Any which way? Uh, oh, oh, wow. Sorry, an opponent's card effect. So not, not your own card effects. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's very important. Ah, and there we see the new... Orbit, well, it's not new, but the Orbital Hydrolander, which is very cool. And Matteo doesn't know what it does, so he has to read it. Oh. It's quite good. <coughs> Have you read it? I haven't. If you've got five monsters with different names in your graveyard and you don't have any two monsters with the same name then you can just special summon it from your hand and it's got 3000 attack. I was I was focused on getting the cards on the screen again and I did. So and then success. it's got another effect which is once a turn on either player's turn you can send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard and then if you still have no cards with the same name in your graveyard you can destroy any card on the field. And now have it for everybody up. So it's a quick non-targeting destruction that also mills, is which is a, pretty amazing. Is there a short name for that? No. No. I mean, okay. those are all different things. Yeah, it, it would be. It's, it's I mean, a, we it's can like describe it as like a mix of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, it's I like guess. like a Swiss army knife. It's like, you sense. know, Card Trooper and Dryden and... <coughs> and I think that is Spell the Book second Fate. time this weekend that we see a Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, uh, enter the field. Uh, the last time that happened was something like round two or round three. I think it was Burning Abyss as well, interestingly Indeed, enough. Yeah, Burning Abyss. Or was it the Danger Deck? No, it was the Danger Deck going up against Burning Abyss. But the Burning Abyss played it. Yeah. And uh, last time, it didn't just uh, mark the beginning of the end. It didn't just mark the beginning, it marked the end. Is that what you were going to say? It, yeah, it marked the end of the end. It's the envoy of the beginning. Yeah, maybe. maybe <laughs> mixing His up friend, things. the Chaos Emperor Dragon. He's yeah. the envoy of the end. It's going to be uh, part of a trivia game that we're going to be running next time when uh, Luke, our g new game show host, is uh, coming up with new ways to, to make players suffer. Like when their friend is drawing a pot of freedom, they don't know exactly what, uh, what they're drawing. 
So Matteo's got the decision now. So he could leave the Ray in defense mode and take less damage, or he could send it to the graveyard for Sky Striker Kagari and add back a spell. But then he will take more damage because he'll put the monster in attack mode. So he's deciding whether he's in danger of Thomas winning this turn if he takes the extra damage. And right. I think he's decided that he's not scared of that. He's not scared. So his, he has got a shark cannon face down to revive something from Thomas Graveyard in the case that he is very close to being hit yeah. for lethal. And he's deciding whether he ought to just do that now anyway. Um, shark Cannon's one of those cards. Uh, Sky Striker have got quite a few cards like this, which are very handy in useful situations. And you kind of want them in your deck, and you don't always want to draw them because they don't start you off. Yeah. But they're handy to have in the deck. So there are questions about which of these are necessary, because really you only want to play the really necessary ones, because they're not cards you want to draw. So Tom Rose uh, seems like he, he claimed command of the he's, field He's here. claimed the board. Well, he has monsters. But, you know, he's got a ghost Mateo's ogre. got more spells and traps. He's got a ghost ogre and an effect veiler in hand, so he's got ways to combat his opponent's attempt of a comeback. Uh, the question is, what is Matteo going to do here? Well, well, Matteo's got the engage in his hand. Uh, he's got a ghost bell to negate something coming out of the graveyard. Uh, depending on what Thomas chooses to send with the Beatrice, that might come up. Uh, but it can negate a seer effect, for example, mm -hmm. which is quite a powerful thing to do. So you, you said earlier that it's not a very powerful. Very often, it's not that powerful. But hit, Burning hit. Abyss has got a lot of cards yeah. which try and come out of the graveyard. So I would say it's it's pretty good against. Burning so in this Abyss. situation, it's really good choice. It can negate a Dante or a seer effect. It could negate a snow, but if he's got more monsters or more cards in his graveyard, he can just bring back the snow anyway. So. It's not as useful. But the issue for Tom is none of his cards are going to stop Widow Anchor taking Beatrice or Dante. And that's pretty bad. Yeah, he's got nothing to counter spells or traps. He's only got stuff against monsters. Most of the time, that is enough. Most of the time, that's what you want. Yeah. But the, the issue I would have with Burning Abyss at the moment is when Sky Strike is such a popular deck and they can so Beatrice is a very powerful card and partially because it's just so difficult to get rid of yeah. but Widow Anchor is a very efficient out to it you just take it and you link it away I mean, it kind of makes sense like if you look at Beatrice again she looks a bit like a wife so those are very hard to <laughs> get rid of speaking from experience here <laughs> does your wife watch the stream? no she doesn't should we, should we tell her to? <laughs> no, no we shouldn't I think we should yeah. You can send her a postcard. <laughs> so here we're seeing that play again that we've seen a few times, which is to use the effect of Area Zero to target Ray and then chain Ray. So Ray is gone by the time Area Zero would try to send it to the graveyard, and Area Zero is still happy to give you a card even if it doesn't send the card it targeted to the graveyard. So you just get the free add. And now we have... Kagari and Kagari, I assume. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, Tom, Tom was immediately seeing that coming and, and basically uh -huh. had the so perfect response. So, uh, what's the card? Alec. Alec is normally quite a hard uh, card to try and interrupt your opponent with, but if you're sneaky and you use it in a chain with another card, then it has to be sent to the graveyard yeah. at the right time because it's a trigger effect, so it's very difficult to trigger something at the time it would be negating an effect that you want to negate. But what goes on here is Thomas used Beatrice in chain to the effect of Ray, and then Alec was sent to the graveyard during that chain. So after that happens, the next chain that's formed will be Kigari and Alec. And because it's Matteo's turn and the way Yu-Gi-Oh chains are built when two yep. cards were trying to activate at the same time. His effect goes first. His effect goes first because they're both optional. Yep. And then Alec will go chain link two and negate the effect of Kagari, which is a pretty nice interaction. Did Tom Rose know all times. of that when he did it? Oh, yeah. Very li likely, right? Oh, yeah. So this has come up. So it used to be important against um, extra deck monarchs, actually. So if your opponent used, um, I can't remember the name now, Edia, and they would summon, use its effect, and it would summon an Eidos, which would give you an extra normal summon, and you could do a similar thing. So you could chain the effect of Beatrice to send Alec. And then that would, uh, on the summon of Eidos, Eidos would go first and then Alec would go second. So some people are so impressed by that move of Alec just now, they're like, okay, you should just concede. <laughs> I don't think he should concede. This is funny because he's now, now he's checking the graveyard again, making 100% sure he's not missing another effect. I think 
I mean, no. he didn't miss an effect. Yeah, that was, was like, that was Be Beatrice was always going to be able to do something to interrupt his yeah. his day. There was no way to play around that. There was no way that Beatrice was not going to happen. There's no way that Beatrice's effect was not going to be used. And then it's up to Tom as to whether what he thinks the most useful thing to do is, as to whether it's to send an Alec, whether it's to send a Snow. Snow, although it's a very powerful card, I don't think it's actually very useful against Sky Strikers because there's no real good target for it. Hmm. So the only monster that's not a link monster they tend to have on the field is Ray. But if you target Ray, then you can just chain Ray and then it, it goes away again. So there's never really a good time to, there's never a good target for Snow. So I can understand not prioritizing getting Snow in Graveyard with the Beatrice. Right. So interestingly... Is that the Ghost Bell in Holy Magic? That is. Yeah. He's he's changed his mind. I don't know if... Oh, my. Oh, he'd already normal summoned is why. Okay, yeah. so he's not changed his mind. That he's just giving away his secret tech here to... His secret tech. ...depress his opponent. Tom Rose is just, like, looking at this um, very quietly, observing, taking it all in. Chuch so, is probably going to be so handing yeah, out... Yeah, he had already normal summoned the Ray this turn, so that may be error. worthy of a procedural error warning of attempting to normal summon a second time in a turn. So, so now the judge needs to ask the player if something like this happened before, if he has received a warning for a procedural error before, um, when they are writing it down on the match result slip, and then I saw our table judge immediately disappear with that match result slip, kind of indicating or hinting at the fact that there's a chance that Matteo Peloni has indeed received an infraction of this kind before in this tournament which then means that there's a chance that the infraction gets upgraded in in terms of uh, how the penalties are working so that means it wouldn't be a warning if that is the case or de depends on what the head judge's ruling is here yeah it depends on how it's, uh, I don't, is it how intentional it is or it, yeah it, it's mostly about um like when does it happen how did it happen does there it matter if it's the same procedure yeah, error again yeah, that, yeah. That, that can also play a role and um, sometimes you get the head judge to say okay i understand perfectly what happened here um and i'm giving players, for example, it, it happened before that somebody says, okay, it's in the feature match, it's extra, extra level pressure. of nervousness. I mean, it, it looked like a mistake. I, it depends whether the person themselves noticed it, I guess. So, so if someone else has to tell them, that's so probably a bit worse. So one of these things, uh, if these guys weren't in the feature match right now, and knowing Tom Rose, there is a chance that the opponent does this. Tom says, hey, by the way, man, you're already normally summoned. The opponent just takes it back and they're like, yeah, whatever. So yeah, that's true as well. So there's that extra bit that there's always a judge watching in the feature match. And yeah. there might be that a player's happy to say, just don't do that. Sometimes that leads to drama later on. <laughs> uh, I've had that situation. Oh, I should have called a judge the five times he summoned something that he wasn't allowed to summon something. I'm like, yeah, sounds like it, to be honest. Can we double check what the cards are he has face down? Um, yes, just we can so we know. bring that. Up for you guys. Cards so play face down. We got an. Oh, so he has got the shark cannon. So I think he might kick himself for not having activated shark cannon already. In so no, with uh, the quick play, sky striker spells they all require you to have no monsters on the field when you activate them, but they don't have to have no monsters on the field when you resolve it. Mm. So you can activate multiple in the same chain, which would give you monsters on your field, and that's fine. Uh, but he can link summon anyway, so he'll then be able to make a link three, which I expect is his plan in order to kill the. BLS. So to break this a little bit further down for the viewers that are just joining us, because apparently a lot of people have been watching the American coverage until the very end, which happened uh, pretty much when we went live this morning okay. at around nine. So they grabbed continuous a quick continuous Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, continuous Yu-Gi-Oh. They they caught up with their C's and now they had four and a half hours of sleep. Now they just join us. So who are you saying is going to be advancing to the top 32, or at least winning the first duel, judging by the field at the moment? For me? Yeah. I don't know. You're I'm a professional fortune teller, Mr. I think, Tom Payne. I think what's going to happen is Matteo's going to get hit by a very nasty effect failure when he tries to use a unicorn to get rid of the BLS. And the BLS is going to stick, and I can't see any way for... Oh, no, he's not going to do that. Does No, Beatrice has to be in the possession, in your possession, in order for you to use the effect to summon a... A monster from your extra deck. Mm -hmm. So that's fine for now. He's not going to trigger the Beatrice. So he's just crashed the Beatrice in order to get rid of it. Tom's just checking. It says possession. Yeah. Um, but it does say possession. So possession, for those of you who don't know, means basically any time that your opponent doesn't control it. So when it, if it says control and you try and summon yeah. it and then it gets hit by a card like Solemn Strike or Solemn Warning, then you wouldn't get the effect if it had to be destroyed in your control. But that the difference between control and possession is basically that one case when the summon is negated. Yeah. Well, so, some cards now do destroy cards in your extra deck or in your hand as well. 
So in that time, if the card is it says possession, then it's fine. But if it says control, then it's not fine. You only control the cards that are on your field. These Neftis cards are like known for that because they you want to destroy them even if they are in your hand, for example. Like really old cards, but who knows? Maybe in the future they're going to get a bit more support. So how is he going to get rid of the uh, Black Luster Soldier here? I don't think he's going to this turn. Now you think he's just leaving that card on the field? I mean, it is a powerful card. However, he has got the he's got the ray in his graveyard. So the fact that it's just going to attack over his monster, then the ray will come back. That's probably okay. I mean, it's not great. It's like the first time I, I hear anybody saying, "Yeah, Black Luster Soldier." It's like, yeah, meh. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, it used to be kind of the stat. It used to be this incredible machine that you know of destruction or whatever. I don't know. But now it's like. It's just, it's just another, another card. card, isn't it? It's, yeah. another it's a card. powerful card, for yeah. sure, but it's just another card. So it does look like it's going to cause slightly too many problems for Matteo. I don't see any good way of him answering I mean, it. I can't it come up with the word right now, but it's uh, when, you, when you have uh, these technical devices like, like phones and they just uh, there's a like, new generation of phones coming out and nobody wants to half the old ones anymore. <laughs> um, can't come up so. with the word, but that's basically what's happening here with these cards. So it doesn't look like Matteo's got anything to stop the impending tour guide. He's from got a very board. pretty graveyard, though. He's got a very big graveyard. Pretty. Very pretty graveyard as well. But yeah, I don't think there's anything to stop a tour guide. Um, um, between all of the cards in his no, hand and field. Um, his he face does, downs are does have a hand trap, not very helpful. But um, not only does Thomas Rose have more hand traps than him, it's also like they, they do more than the but ghost It's not spell. the hand trap that you want. No. Ah. It's the one you might deserve, depending on <laughs> if you've been naughty or nice, but it's not the one you want right now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, Thomas's decision to play Burning Abyss with no spells and traps is going to be uh, benefited, I suppose, by the fact that a lot of the Sky Striker players chose to run <laughs> spell and trap removal in their main deck. Yeah. Like, we, so we can see... Matteo's got that face down twin twister, which is not really going to get very far. It's not going to do anything all that helpful. And again, um, Thomas Rose's face, I'm not sure if, he ha if he, it has moved at all so far. A tiny little bit. He, he's um, giving it like a wink or something every once in a while. But that's pretty much the extent of him uh, giving anything away. He's, he's completely in the zone the entire time, just, just does it like a poker player. And so far, absolutely flawless execution from him. Knows inside out what to do with this Burning Abyss deck. He has been playing it for a while. Yes. So now he's got the decision of whether he wants to try and just swing for game, or he's going to fear that a, a Widow Anchor almost always stops you swinging for game unless you clear it before the battle phase, because it will take the monster you control with the highest attack. Oh, so here we do we, actually we get do to see, see the, the ghost, ghost bell on the server. Tom probably was expecting that, considering he, 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 he saw, saw the ghost yep. bell. Yeah. What was that? But I don't think it's going to bother Tom too much. I, I don't see why he's not just going to attack with all of his monsters and try and win the game. So, and it's going to happen because yeah, there's, there's no Widow Anchor face It's down. also like the, again, we saw him like speeding up a tiny little bit. Um, not saying that he's usually playing slowly, but um, he, he was going through those motions very, very quickly. And very, very often that indicates, yeah, I'm, I'm going to attack very, very soon here. I mean, I guess... He's had a while to sort of think about things because yeah. Sky Striker do a few things before they end their turn. This, like this sounds like really weird advice, but you you are allowed to think about your following turn while it's your opponent's turn. Exactly. So many times I've seen somebody who who's at like infinite time to think about what he's going to do next while his opponent was thinking in his turn. And then it's his turn, and, and it's like they just started um, thinking about the situation now. So we're going to see Gallus once again. I love Gallus. It's yeah, so you, great. you keep saying that. I used to play Monster Mash decks ages ago, and it, it like I mean I used to play monsters with higher levels. And he's Milder Snow. That's pretty Oof. pretty bad. It's pretty bad for uh, this, this guy's Mateo. on the wrong team. We, I, I'm pretty certain there's a casino very close by, and um, <laughs> Tom, Tom Rose. Could... I used to play Gallus in decks with like Tragodia, and you could build Tragodia, and it would do two thousand damage. <laughs> oh my god, you're a bad person. It was great. <laughs> You like it. All right, so here He's Snow is snow. making the first of a possible couple of appearances here. Five monsters on Tom Rose's side of the field. We saw Burning Abyss do the exact same thing. Oh, sorry, there was Trickster in, in our last feature match going up against Burning Abyss, and then nothing followed. I cannot imagine that to be the case with Tom Rose here. I'm interested to see whether Tom Rose has got a plan for killing his opponent through Widow Anchor. Because that's the only thing. Like He's putting all these more monsters on the field. Um, and the, the, the main defense you're expecting is the Widow Anchor to defend. But there is none. 
according there to is our none. app. So there is none, you're so just, it is just, just going to be game. But I'm just interested in what the point of the extra plays oh, are right, if okay. not to play around the Widow Because he had he has game before, yep. even without a Widow I mean, it is just game now. He's the, just going to attack. The purpose of the exercise is to um, put your opponent under maximum psychological pressure. Exactly. So, I mean, this so has a nice see. thing. It OTKs through. Well, there's, there's if one attack goes through, then it is game because Matteo is not on enough life points. And now they agreed to what you just said. That means that Tom Rose has taken the first game. Matteo Peloni now stands with his back against the wall he's he's had quite the run this weekend like everybody in the top 64 but yet if he wins yet uh, if he loses yet another duel he's going to be out of the tournament just quickly going to look at the records actually just to give you guys a bit more background regarding this uh, tom rose is 912 and matteo is same same score basically same score um just Tiebreaker is working in Thomas Rose's favor. So, this is a, a, a thing that benefits people playing a deck like Burning Abyss, which is people don't have cards in their side deck for Burning Abyss. Okay, yeah. And there's sometimes, you know, there's, there's, there's one thing where they don't have cards in their side deck for you, and there's another thing where they have cards in their main deck they want to take out, and there's even nothing good in their side deck they can rotate. <laughs> yeah. It's not like they don't just have specific cards. The only card that might... Well, there's Mind Crush, and there's Infinite Impermanence. So I suppose there are... Yeah, six of, copies. They're fairly generic, and they can come in. They're just not that impactful, I guess. Right. And you have to make the decision when you're playing a deck like... Uh, so there's sort of mind games when you're playing... Um, a deck with no spells and traps as to whether you are scared of your opponent siding into some spells and traps that might hurt you, like Imperial Order or something. So if he just puts in the one copy of Imperial Order and you don't have an answer to that, then you're in trouble. It's a bit of a weird question, but how aware is Matteo Piloni that Tom Rose is not playing any spells or traps uh, oh, okay. except for that Sekka's Light? Completely aware. 100%? I mean, Thomas Rose played Sekka's Light in that game. And then he's like, okay, okay. It prevents then you from activating but let's, any let's further say he, spells he wouldn't have uh, seen that card. Is the opponent then, maybe he had a weird draw and he didn't get to draw any spells or traps? Or is, is that a situation like I that? I think not running any other spells and traps except Sekka's Light is completely standard in Burning Abyss right now. Okay, so you would say this is the usual thing? It's, I would it's say, not a big yeah, surprise. it's completely standard. Yeah. All right. I mean, as well as that, he saw a lot of cards come down from Thomas because the Dante is milling three as well. So yeah, okay. So you, you, you're you know, saying he, he had a pretty good class. He, he, he's game. also played Gallus. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I had the player match history for Tom Rose. He went up against Altergeist, one. Trickstar, one. Lost to Drew Draco. Um, one against Invoked Mech Knight. One against Sky Striker Pure. Against Kiwi Huang, who's one of our judges usually. Want yep. to play this time around. One against True Draco. Um, one against... Sky Striker Pure again, that was round seven. Won against, uh, sorry, lost to Sky Striker Trickster, so his record against Sky Striker Trickster is not like unblemished, basically. But uh, this is Sky Striker Pure that he's playing, not Sky Striker Oh, Trickster. Sky Striker Trickster, you're right, thank you. Uh, round nine, last round yesterday, he won again against Sky Striker Pure. And then today, he w won again against Sky Striker Pure, then he won against Dinosaur, and he ended up drawing against Kevin Cutter in the last round with Goki. So, I think he went up against Sky Striker Pure uh, four times? Five, four or five times, and he won all of those. Well, you would expect someone to be very prepared for Sky Striker. Yeah, th so that, all of that was correct. I'm, I'm interested by this. So, the last Burning Abyss player did this. They chose to side out the... Sekka's Light? Sekka's Light yeah. in favor of Twin Twisters. And I don't know what you're so scared of. <laughs> against Sky Striker Pure, what sort of floodgate you might be expecting that but means you would rather play a Twin Twisters than a Pot of Greed? Is it more that you want your opponent to side in a certain way to, to combat your Sekka's Light and but stuff? Then, what do you side to combat Sekka's Light? Yeah, you're the expert here. That's, that's Mystical your Ref Panel. <laughs> okay, I've seen that card a couple of times. This that weekend. would be a good answer to it, Sekka's Light. I would, I would go crazy. Doesn't seem like anybody um, thought of that so far. No one has thought of that so far. Um, but Tom has got the Orbital Hydraland of this game, which is pretty great. Yeah. So throwing down that Ash on the first turn engage is... It's, it's interesting. I think it's not something that everyone does. Some people like to hold it until they're going to see a draw off engage. Um... I, don't, I honestly don't know what's correct. I don't mind that at all because yeah. engage 
is basically the best card in their deck. <laughs> Tom Rose does have the Twin Twizzlers, takes out two back row cards. Um, but is that better than drawing two cards himself? I'm not. I'm not That's 100 percent sure, but ask. I mean, I mean, he, one he, of those cards was Jamming Waves. Yeah, but he did get rid of two cards. So maybe like, what else can you ask for? You could draw two cards. You could, yeah, but this might be better, is what I'm saying. It might be, but I don't think it is. That what was that Jamming Waves going to do? Jamming Waves destroys face down spells and traps. Yeah. Tom doesn't have any of them. It can distract people like crazy. Yeah, by making them play a Twin Twisters. Exactly. Which he didn't need to have had. It's all right, because we're going to see Orbital Hydra. No, we're not. Oh, he's got two Droll in his graveyard. Or maybe he doesn't. I can't see all of his graveyard. No, he does have two uh, Droll and Lockbird in his graveyard. See, if he hadn't had the Twin Twisters, he wouldn't have discarded the Droll and Lockbird. He'd better play Orbital Hydra Lander now, and that would have been really cool. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to give up on this. I, just, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get what you're it's scared de of. It's definitely something that we should ask him. I would side Twin Twister if I was scared of it. So against like a true Draco deck where you're expecting to see very nasty cards like Skill Drain, um, the True King's thing that stops you playing spells and it's monster effects. I can't remember his name now. All right, Monarchs Erupt, etc. Like maybe Rivalry, maybe Goes and Match. Mm -hmm. Then you can't really deal with that with monster effects. Um, but I don't know what there is that you can't deal with in the Burning of a Stick? Sky Striker deck. Sky Striker. That would so. mean you would sacrifice such a valuable card in your main deck, such as Sekka's Light. Ah, here we're seeing the mighty Triple Burst Dragon. Triple Burst Dragon's very cool. Do you know what it does? Uh, I'm, I'm about to find out, here. Yeah. It has that very handy effect of stopping your opponent from activating any card effects when you attack with it. So in particular, your opponent can't bring back their Sky Striker Ray. Yeah when you attack over a Sky Striker monster. And it can also be tributed to summon a Link 1 from your graveyard, I think. Or maybe it's a Link 1 or 2. So Link 1, a 2 or lower. Link yeah, 2 or, or lower. Two. So it's pretty good in the Sky Striker deck. You can attack over someone else's Sky Striker monster and then use it to bring back one of your own Sky Striker monsters. Mm. So unfortunately, Tom is not going to be able to access Beatrice. And the reason he wants to access Beatrice is so that... Um, that Ghost Bell coming in very handy to stop him from bringing back the Dante, which would then have allowed him to access Beatrice. And well, if he'd been able to access Beatrice, he could have sent Snow, and then Snow allows you to manipulate your graveyard to the point that you can drop the Orbital Hydra Lander because you can banish the extra copies of cards in your graveyard. It's a very from summoning it. unusual situation where we see both of these players with these decks uh, very low on resources. And the Sky Strike is kind of deceptive when it's low on resources, though, because if you don't stop them, you're going to see what's going to happen now. He's yeah. going to end up with, like... He's already on Tons it. Tons of cards in just a second. Give it a second. Oh, I will. I will. I got all the time He's going to take work. Tom's Which triple burst dragon with his widow anchor. 14 more minutes is what I mean when I say I got all the time in the world. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, he's going to take Tom's widow. I don't know who wins, who's favored in time because uh, far, Sky, far. Sky Striker do have their favorite new toy, which far, is far, far, far. Hayate, which can attack directly, which is quite good in time, right? Yeah, it is. Just ignoring your opponent's board. So here is the Widow Anchor. Ah, so he's activating the Widow Anchor first because he didn't have the third spell in his grave, so he's decided it's more important to get the third spell in his graveyard to get the extra draw rather than have the Widow Anchor in his hand. And we all agree with that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's what you want to draw that's better than Widow Anchor. And if he searches another Widow Anchor, something very bad is going to happen here. Uh, if he tries to use the Widow Anchor, because Widow Anchor has to negate the effect of the monster on the field mm -hmm. in order to take control of it. And if he's already negated the effect with the first Widow Anchor that he played, then he won't be able to negate the effect again, so he won't get to take control of it. I mean, he might, that might not be his plan, but if that is his plan, then yeah. it's not going to work. It's not a great plan. And I'm sure Tom will know that. And that is not his plan. Or maybe, I don't know, we'll see if it's his plan. <laughs> he's just making a Hayate now just to poke for damage, because why not? Yeah, I, I, maybe I would have preferred to see the Hayate just attack first to put the third spell in the graveyard rather than throwing a Widow Anchor from your hand. There must be something that he was thinking why this made sense. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. He, he's attacked now. He's not done anything give, with... Give the player credit. Give the player too. credit, yeah. I think... Uh, I also he's not done anything with the, the extra card that he searched, though, so I don't know why he wanted to search it in his main phase one in particular if he wasn't going to use it. I saw the Mind Crush while he was shuffling his stick. So he could have basically done the same play, but still had a Widow Anchor face down if he'd just attacked first and searched in main phase two. 
I don't know if he was like hoping to draw something in particular that would have been crushing yeah. and allowed him to win the game. But Sky Striker don't really have that many cards that allow you to win the game on one turn. Yeah, so Tom Rose has two cards in hand. We can see that shuffling. We too. can see, yes, yeah, um, so we can see Seer and we can see the Orbital Hydra Lander. Yeah, I was about to say we only see one on the app. But uh -huh. yeah, there's also a Seer. So I think they may have missed the Seer being added back from the Dante. Something like that. Um, what else does he need to come back here? So I think any other Burning Abyss monster would be very nice. Because that will allow him to rank up his Dante. So Seer can be summoned to get back a Dante. And uh, then if you have another Burning Abyss monster, you can turn that into a Beatrice. And as we said, with the card we want to see for Tom is Snow, so he can get his Orbital Hydra Lander online. So he could just draw Snow as well and then link summon with it. So Tom did not draw into a Burning Abyss monster. He, he drew did into not. He drew into evenly, matched. evenly matched. Which is okay. Uh, if, if he attacks and the Triple Burst Dragon gets Widow Anchored, then he can use the Evenly Matched on the very same turn that he's drawn it. Yeah, and then forces the opponent to end up with just one card on the field. Yeah, so he might keep the Shizuku or whatever his other face down card is. But I still don't think uh, Matteo like would be unhappy with yeah. that. I yeah. think he's, st he's still got... If you keep this, as long as you have one Sky Striker card most of the time and you're going to be able to resolve it, then that's pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, it's actually he's using infinite impermanence. I don't think he can use infinite impermanence in response to the attack if Tom's already attacked. So maybe he's using it in the. Yeah, if, if your opponent just says, okay, I'm going to attack you. You might be like, no, hang on a second. I'm yeah, play you're this. like, wait a second, I wanted to do something at the start of the battle. I mean, maybe phase. Tom chose to attack anyway, I don't know. Um, or end of main phase, but whatever. If he'd already attacked, I don't know that he was allowed to use the infinite impermanence. No, I don't think that was the case. Unless triple burst dragon only prevents monster effects. But I don't know. So... So Tom just choosing to set the seer because... There's an, oh no, he's not choosing to set the seer yet. He's not decided whether he's going to set the seer. Uh, sorry, the triple burst dragon can negate monster effects during the damage step. Oh, so it, does, it doesn't stop your opponent from using spells and traps? No. When a spell trap card or monster effect is activated, you can negate the activation. It negates the activation? I just thought it prevented your opponent from activating things. You can negate the activation, no? Nope. During the damage step. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, it only applies during the damage step anyway. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I thought it was one of those when you attack, your opponent can't activate anything until the no. end of the damage step. But that Quite was, different. That was wrong. It's, it's not an ancient gear monster. <laughs> or what's the new card? Utopia. Yeah. That's but the cool one. Everybody knows the engine gear, though. I hope so. <laughs> Maybe they're not that old. We're, ne we're never sure. All right. So Tom Rose is going to sit in that not really comfortable position here. It's I would say it's very uncomfortable. He's only got the one Ash. Um, and realistically, this is the sort of situation where you expect the Sky Striker player to take the game, even though they're not going to do it maybe this turn, maybe next turn, maybe even two turns afterwards. You kind of expect that they have enough cards now and their opponent's low enough on cards yeah. now. Yeah. And would you want to uh, shuffle up here to, just so you have more time going into the last duel? I don't know whether Tom prefers to be in a situation where there's low time or whether he prefers to be in a situation where there's enough time to play the full game out. I mean, he does still have the evenly matched, which is obviously a card that is capable of producing big swings. Yeah. Um, but the problem is, if a big swing is incoming, it might be enough of a swing to ex basically tie the game and uh, give Matteo Piloni the win in that second duel. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. I don't think Tom is considering that much that he's, uh, he's going to win this game. I think maybe it's in his interest. Maybe he's decided it's in his interest. I mean, there is also benefit to hoping your opponent makes a mistake. Yeah, there's always that opportunity as well. And he has cards which could make mount a comeback if his opponent makes a mistake. So he might just want to wait. He might think, look, if my, I know if my opponent plays this out correctly, he's got more than enough stuff to win the game. Yeah. However, I'm just going to wait until he does that. And then... Well, he's definitely on the right track here. He's so he's got a lot of monsters, which is a good start. Uh, I mean, there is a, a re once you get Boral Sword out, you kind of know it's going to be game most of the time. Uh, so he can turn his token into a Link Karibo. So, I mean, I, I think, well, there's a number of different ways to win the game here, but you could just, for example, turn your Shizu... He, to be fair, Tom's got Ash, so it's not it's not immediate. But he can just turn those into Boral Sword, uh, normal summon uh, uh, the Ash from his hand, mm -hmm. and then uh, attack twice with the Boral Sword and the Triple Burst. So that's a fairly simple way of doing it. 
It is fairly simple. It is Wh fairly where's simple. the effect veiler when uh, Tom needs one? I don't know. Somewhere else. Hiding in the deck. Hiding in the deck. And um, this would be the moment where he needs to drop something. So yeah, the but he can't. Summit of Widow and that Anchor, means so it is, it is game for stolen. Matteo Belloni. With that, we're going to the last duel in the top 64 here in our feature match, uh, with Tom Rose now having the option to either go first or second, depending on what he wishes for. Whereas Matteo Pelloni with Sky Striker Pure Deck, um, yeah, he has to figure it out. What, what's my he opponent going to do? He has to figure do? it out. My guess is Tom will choose to go first. It doesn't look like there's anything, any like massive advantage to be gained by going second. I'm still. I would still like to have seen the. Lie of Seca rather than... I mean, maybe he decided that evenly matched was a big enough card that he would rather have that than the Light of Seca and not just the Twin Twisters mm -hmm. and the Light of Seca. But isn't he citing them out again but now? It does look very much like all those spells and traps are finding their way yeah. out as the Basically, deck. Basically, Tom Rose going back to basics in a way. He's back to the, back to the back original to the main deck. Indeed. Yeah. And, um, and he's citing out the Trolls. It's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Trolls... It's, it, the, there's the, the plan with Droll normally is if you activate Droll on one turn, you want to win the game on the next turn. Oh, we had the Effect Veiler sided out. And, um, uh, the Rescue Cats rescue are coming cat in, well. so maybe he's going for that sneaky win. With uh, So he's got a Naturia Beast in his extra deck. Yeah, actually, that was one of the questions that came up where people were asking, um, how is he not uh, using Naturia Beast here in the very first game? Uh, well, the answer to that is that he doesn't have the tools to make it in his main deck, he has them in his side deck. Oh, that's, that's a very straightforward answer. That's a very straightforward answer. So he's got an extra copy of Rescue Cat and an Elephant, which is the level 2 tuner that can be summoned by Rescue Cat in his side deck. So he, I assume the plan against Sky Striker is to use that uh, when you know you're going to go first. Yep. Because it's much more handy when you know you're going to go first. All right. Although so there, there, there are a reasonable amount of answers to the Natura Beast now. Sorry, I a interrupted bit more than you. five minutes on the clock here um, between these two guys. Um, it seems like it's uh, there's a bit of an agreement in the chat here that uh, timeout favors Burning Abyss. I mean, yeah. they do have Seer, so traditionally that would be true. But I think having Hi Hayate does more damage than Seer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and they've got Gallus as well. And Gallus, as we know, is just amazing. As I've been saying, absolutely, it is. It is just the best. They're going to be a cheerleader outfit. Somebody, somebody's going to make a cheerleader outfit for you for the next event, and you're just going. Gallus to... and Gillosaurus, some of my favourite cards. Okay. Gillosaurus has gone down a bit in popularity. It used to be really good, but then Invoker got banned, and yeah. then there wasn't really any point. All right. So this time around, Tom Rose drawing two cards, second slide, immediately giving away to his opponent that he sided into something very different from what he saw last turn, that he doesn't have to Indeed. fear something like an evenly matched. Well, I mean, most people don't fear evenly matched when they're going second anyway. No, that is true. Yeah, fair enough. But uh, still, like, giving away that he sided into a very, very different deck than, yeah. than what the opponent saw last So, time. Tom's got that Suravis, the Ancient and Ascended, which is, again, he, you've got to have all these cards if you're playing Sekka's Light, which kind of function a bit like Spells and Traps, but aren't, in fact spells and traps, and this one allows you to protect one of your monsters on the field from a targeting effect by discarding it from your hand to the graveyard. So I think the plan for that is to use it in combination with something like a Naturia Beast or a Vanity's Fiend in order to make it even harder to get rid of. Right. Let's see if we see another good mill. Mm, nah. Nah. <laughs> it's, it's not the best mill we've seen this weekend. Not the best, but the monsters go to the graveyard, so it could be worse. So I think we might just see the standard Burning Abyss turn one, where you send Graf off your Fiendish Rhino Warrior, which then summons Seer, which then gets linked with the Dante into an Underclock Taker, and then the Seer brings back the Dante, and the Dante brings back the Seer, and then the Dante that got brought back is then upgraded into a Beatrice underneath the Underclock Taker. All of that sounds fair. It's fairly fair. <laughs> But this could be interrupted if there is a ghost bell, which there is for the third time in yeah. the hand of Matteo. Yeah, I'm just realizing again that for some reason we see what Matteo is holding in his hand. Sky Striker Ace Ray, uh, Sky Striker Airspace, Airborne, Ghost Bell and Hornet Mansion, evenly matched Sky Striker Maneuver, that is Chamming Waves. So Tom's decided rather than summoning, he's, he's going to, rather than have an underclock taker, he'd rather have a decode talker. So he's using the Farfra in his hand, essentially, to upgrade the Underclock into the Decode. 
So Tom's got the option now of arranging the chain whichever way he likes in order to... Uh, okay, I'm interested that the ghost bell was not activated there at any point. Hmm. It looked like he flashed the ghost bell. Maybe I just was seeing things. Maybe it was a premonition. But it looked like he showed him a ghost bell. Uh, obviously, again. so Tom has the right to choose what... Oh, he... Psychological no? pressure. No, there's nothing. <laughs> so I was going to say, if you put... Uh, if you put the more things you can put on a chain, the more options you have for playing around card effects. Yeah. So Ghost Bell has to be used directly in response to the card effect that it wants to negate. So if he'd managed to put like another Burning Abyss monster that he was less interested in using, then he could have done that. So this evenly matched is, is definitely bad news for Tom. Uh, he's... I think because he's choosing to activate the Beatrice now, that might indicate that he's going to choose to keep the Seer. But we'll see. <laughs> no Gullis? <laughs> People are saying, why is no Gullis here? Why no Gullis? I mean, I don't know what he would have made. He could have just made another Dante, I guess. So we are going to see Snow. I mean, I suppose it's the most sort of generic, useful card, even though in this particular matchup, yeah. it's not so helpful. So I think we're going to see Seer, but that, that's just a guess. So, yeah, so he's choosing to banish the Beatrice and the what's his face Deco Talker. Yeah, you guys are now seeing the uh, hand of Matteo, of course. He's still got jamming waves. I don't know what the jamming waves is doing in his deck. It's it sometimes it might you, be his lucky charm. You can just forget to side out a card like jamming waves. But then he drew it the last game, and yeah. I don't know why if you then draw it and go, you might just not go. Oh, hang on a second, this isn't really very good against a deck which can't set anything. I'm interested why he didn't summon a Hayate there. Mm -hmm. I think if you summon Hayate, you can attack with it. And then, well, not only will you do damage when there's only 50 seconds left. Yeah, which is a big um, deal. I don't know if he's paying that much attention to the time, but then you can then summon Shizuku later. I'm not sure if the players are aware like how much time exactly is left in the round. Maybe he's just forgotten that Hayate is a card. Just um... Because if he just summoned Hayate right now, that would have just won him the game. Uh, well, yeah, it would have done 1,500 damage. I mean, Hayate's maybe just not been out long enough that it's it's automatic to remember to use it, but... I think not using Hayate there is just going to cost him this game because there's 14 seconds left and Tom's got a Gallus and Gallus is going to do some burn damage and that will be that. And that's it. I think as soon as Gallus does burn damage, that's game over. That and is it indeed left. looking looking really, really good for Thomas Rose. Now we're going to time. Thomas Rose smiling, Matteo Peloni, not, not quite sure yet. That's just game. Yeah. And... I think he's now only realizing what's going to happen with the burn. I mean, I think, I think, in theory, Thomas Rose has done 1600 with the Gallus, but I think if he'd spent the extra time to attack with Hayate, then time would have been called on his turn and he would have just won by 1500 life points. Yeah. But realistically, even with no consideration of time, I see absolutely no reason why he wouldn't have used Hayate last turn anyway. So, well done to Tom Rose, who advances to the top 32 of the largest Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament in Europe ever with, of course, signature deck Burning Abyss. Let's talk about it in the post-match analysis. Now, talk about an explosive finish in I this match. I should correct myself. He used evenly matched. He couldn't use Hayate that time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good point, good point. Good I'm point. sure that Maybe someone on the Twitch chat beat me to that one. Maybe but I've figured it out now. Maybe everyone in the Twitch chat maybe beat Maybe everyone. To that. Maybe yeah. I was being told Th off. This is how no. the Twitch chat works, usually. This is how the Twitch chat works. They tell me. That yeah, but uh, honestly, it, it looked like the game was like moving towards a standstill between these two. There wasn't that much happening. Um, and then well, suddenly. Well, not that much happened. The game did. Yeah, it, it, was, a bit, get it was a bit of a off a little barn bit, burner yeah. towards the end, really. But then suddenly Tom Rose found the Gallus. Everybody before was asking, no Gallus, no Gallus, what's happening here? I, I think if he used it before in his previous turn, he would have given away to his opponent, I'm going to burn you, and the opponent knew, okay, now I have to do even more damage. Uh, yeah, I don't think it would have made a difference, though. You know, okay. So I think I don't think he could have done any damage. It wouldn't if, have. I mean, if his plan was to use the evenly match, then other big questions, of course. Uh, did the players know exactly how much time was left? 
Um, I, do they I have guess a clock so. next to them? And they don't have a clock next to them. They have the touches and they are in their ears um, in the most literal sense. They they tell. I think they tell them every once they, in a while. Can they ask? They can ask, yes. But it's not always obvious to ask, is it? Yeah. yeah, some people feel a bit intimidated in the feature match area. So they, they don't want to um, like leave a negative impression or feel like they're getting on the wrong side of the judge in a way so so they don't uh, they kind of fear asking which is not a good thing to do like always ask the judge for help well it might be a bit suspicious if someone was like asking the time yeah yeah, yeah. If, if you do it 10 times time then yeah just... that's a different story all right so with that we do have a burning abyss deck in the top 32 i told this to you guys before the start of the round that we do have our full bracket i'm just going to try and bring that up for you um this is... Oh, sorry. This is top 64. Let's bring that up. No? Yes? Yeah, that's top 64. That's some of it. That's or are you some looking of it, yeah. the breakdown? We don't have the bracket yet. Normally, we have a really cool-looking bracket here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. So um, now we have to go through the matches this way. But um, one again... One by one. You see, a lot, you see a lot of Sky Striker. You also see a couple of other decks in there. Um, here are a couple of players that we... We were thinking about featuring them over the course of the weekend, Carmelo Budilieri, uh, playing for Germany, <laughs> Italian name, went to the World Championship before because he advanced... He came second two years ago. I thought it was top WCQ. four. Uh, it was it was a final. You're right, yeah. Then uh, Sakaias Shaw, for example, on the... He featured yesterday. Featured yesterday. Is that Pascal who he played yesterday that he's playing again? Oh, I can actually look that up. Um, oh, was who... who I just saw a P. I can't remember his second name from yesterday. I think it was round seven yesterday. Round seven yesterday is Maximilian Groschel was Anthony Lopez. No, maybe it was round eight then. <laughs> it's not this round. Yeah, um, it was. Yeah, it actually, that's a, that's it a, is. It's a rematch. It's a rematch. Maybe we should have it, featured them again just to confuse people. In the top people. sixty-four, it's Pascal Kim with. Um, oh, Sakai was, Sky Striker, was yeah. playing uh, Pendulum. Yeah, yeah. Pendulum. So that's a that's a rematch of what happened yesterday. And that was one of the better ones. It was? That was the, the one match that went almost the entire time, if I remember correctly. If you look at the next couple of tables, uh, I can actually go one further down. So we see Paul Schuffenecker going up against Raphael Neven. Both of these guys, guys strike a pure. Um, then Din Kapui with Burning Abyss going up against Dominic Langenberger. Um, more Sky Striker, more Sky Striker. A couple of True Draker, three True Draker on this page. Yeah, and Adrian Dursun, who we had in one of the deck features for Indeed. this weekend. So he also did really, really well. Uh, good choice for a deck feature, apparently. Uh, also national champion, I think Spanish? Spanish. Spanish, yeah. yeah. German guy, flew to Spain, took just a vacation. To, just to show them up. Played some cards. Yeah, that's how you do it. And um, here on this side, we see, of course, Thomas Rose, also Temis Gietzis, who we featured earlier in the day, uh, yesterday, with uh, Sky Striker. He went up against Jan Oliver Gross with Altergeist. All right. Um, we could go further, but I'm going to wait for the bracket to appear in the next round. I'm just going to quickly look at the deck breakdown for you guys. That's what we want to see. This is, um, again, deck breakdown at the start of the day, if that's possible. I think we can't go... Oh, we can't get rid of the breakdown. Yeah, breakdown Here you go. round one. So this is round one. Um, just a quick quick to take in. Sky Striker Pure, most popular deck. Everything else is not going to shift places. Those are the two important things. Uh, this is think, the start yeah, of the second 10, day. The most drastic thing, I think, is seeing the Goki migrate upwards. Yeah, Goki is moving and up the ranks. Everything else is basically staying where they were. However, Sky Striker Pure is putting more distance between themselves and everything else. And now if you look at the, top 64, the top 64... Top 64, Goki has Goki, gone all the Goki's way Goki's going to take it this weekend. I'm going to calling it You're now. Calling. Goki You've decided. You've seen the light. Yeah, the top eight is going to be four Gokis, four Sky Striker Pure. <laughs> All right, guys, with that, you are in the know. We're going to break down that stuff a little bit further for you. Of course, you can find all of that and check it out in your own time in the written coverage. Uh, but that Rudy's really doing so. Quick shout out to him. And with that, we're signing off and head over to Matt and Luke and a winner interview. Thank you very much, Ollie. Interesting. The top 64 breakdown. Yeah, Cyber Dragon made it. I'm super happy, but we're not here to talk about Cyber Dragons. We have Tom, the winner of our feature match. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I forgot you were winning. I just assumed you were third commentator. This <laughs> is what we were getting ready to cast another game, right? Yeah. I'd uh, be here in my jacket. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Still got the, the pig pin, though. Tell us about the pig pin. What, what's uh, going on? The, this pig pin is from my girlfriend. Okay. She, she is my little piggy. 
Aww. So she comes with me when I'm playing events. Oh, is she here? Uh, she couldn't make it, but little pig oh, came instead. Of, because of the travel. Yeah, there ah, was there was all good. sorts going on, and unfortunately she couldn't come to this event. But well, she's here in she's, spirit. She's like, always there supporting me. Yeah. Yeah. We heard about your travel coming here, man. It's like even even God tried to stop you. You're like, no, no, we're yeah. we're coming here this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It was mad. Um, so let's talk about that game. Uh, game one seemed pretty savage, to be honest. Your turn one was, well, your opponent's turn one just disrupted left, right, and center. Like, what were your thoughts going into the matchup? Um, I mean, Sky Striker is what I've tested most against. Uh, I don't think that the Burning Abyss deck is strictly better than Sky Striker, mm. but nobody's practiced against it. So, so long as you can make plays that they aren't able to properly anticipate, they can misuse their cards. You're sort of relying on them making mistakes, but it usually happens. Like if you're playing for a long enough day and a long enough round, they're going to slip up, and you can just like find your way through. Yeah. And well, then you've got three thousand attack monsters like sort of Beatrice and Hydralander, and they end games real fast when they come out. Blackluster Soldier, another really big heavy hitter in that one. We saw you had lots of monsters that attack twice. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying about the, the matchup with Sky Striker. So across all the Burning Abyss decks, uh, there's 83 in the tournament. Um, yeah. They have a 30% win rate against the pure Sky Striker deck. Is that surprising? I mean, only one of those 83 is playing my build, so... Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's... <laughs> no, I, I, know I, that, I figured that was probably going to be I know that there are <laughs> other players here on Burning Abyss, and yeah. some of them even doing really well, but mm -hmm. there will be a lot of people who are playing Burning Abyss because it's an easier-to-afford deck, yeah. it's a bit more casual, so... It's, it kind of skews the statistics a little bit. Most yeah, of the competitive absolutely. players don't choose Burning Abyss as a go-to. Uh, I just play it mostly because I know how to play it, and yeah. it means that I don't have to invest a lot of time in learning how to play a new deck for every event. Yeah, so not necessarily you think that the, the deck can just outright beat that matchup, but you think that you know it well enough to be able to beat that matchup. Yeah, if, if my deck is even like 80% as strong as the deck that I'm playing against, I rely on the fact that I know it very well and they probably don't to get me swinging the balance extra, in the opposite the direction. Amount, yeah. All right, well, yeah, your win rate's certainly higher than the average. <laughs> we had quite a few people coming on with their decks and what would appear to be um, like a disaster matchup. They just explained, oh, other people are just building their boards wrong. Again, so they're just playing the matchup yeah. wrong. Um, and it seems to be a common theme with some One of the people. One of those people parks, so yeah, it's, it, it's definitely a, a theme among the, the higher players. The most recent Forbidden and Limited list really blew the format right open. So yeah. at this point, there are too many decks around to be able to properly test every single matchup that you're likely to face. Yeah. And Burning Abyss is nowhere near the top of the pile for what your priorities are for testing. Yeah. You, most players that come here won't play it. Yeah. Like, and if they do, they're going to have to work it out on the fly for the most part. Yeah. So what you're saying is if you want to do really well in an event, everyone should start playing Burning Abyss? Uh, no, because if everyone started playing a Burning Abyss, everyone else would test against it and then it wouldn't work. And I'm, then you'd I'm pick just, something else. I'm just saying that you gain some quantifiable advantage by choosing a deck that most of your opposition won't know how to play perfectly against because they don't test. They don't, well, they, they test for... The Sky Strikers, they test yeah. the Goki because that's what you're expecting. It would be a waste of time to test for decks that you probably won't face. Until it happens and you get knocked out of the top 64. But there you go, that's, that's, your, te that's your first test, yeah. <laughs> I guess, in that situation. So that game too, uh, when we were looking at it, um, it looked like you had a chance of getting there and then you hit the second draw on Lockbird in the graveyard and got stuck with the Hydralander in hand? Uh, yeah, and I also milled two Finnish Rhino Warriors when oh, I activated okay. the Dante, so I was way off. Um, I guess it would have been less greedy if I discarded the Hydralander with the Twin Twister, but I thought if I can get to this Hydralander, it probably just shuts the game out, so I'll take a bit of a risk. Uh, I'll make uh, a play that might end up backfiring a bit, but if it doesn't, I'm already a game up. I could seal the match now, or I've got another game that I can fall back on if it goes wrong. And in the end, it went his way, but... We still had game three at that point. Yeah, I guess playing to win in the situation where the reward it would just massively outweighed the risk was the correct decision. It was just like, hey, if this goes through, I just uh, walk, walk away clean. <laughs> and then game three, the only note I got eventually leads up to Gallus. Still a good card. Yeah, the time rules need to change. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the the idea of um, if you're up the first game, then the second game you can do a bunch of like risky plays, the the high risk, high reward kind of stuff. Because, yeah, it, it, even if it doesn't work out, you can fall back on that third yeah. game, uh, which is good. I'm, I don't play Gallus for the burn effect. I play it because it's a beast for my rescue cats, yeah. and it summons itself from hand, so you can make your Dantes, 
or you can use it to extend your link plays. But I guess tacked onto that, you get a neat little uh, card that you can play if you find yourself in that situation in your yeah. main phase where you need to do damage. And yeah. It came through for me then. Yeah, and 60, you hit 100 eight. points. One of the, one of the, yeah, one of the biggest level monsters in your deck as well. A level one would have been enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tom. Well, thank you for coming on and sharing your insights. Hopefully, you have a good run to the finals, and we we'll yeah. see you up here again a little yeah. bit later today. Thank you. I hope so too. Best of luck, man. Yeah, best of luck. Right. Well, that was it for the top 64. We're going to be hopefully seeing Tom Rose back here again soon. But for this round, we are done. We will see you guys in the top 30.